I'm Daryl Urbanski and welcome to the Best Business Podcast. My mission is to help create 200 new multi-millionaire business owners. How? You'll do better when you know better. In my interviews, you'll hear from self-made millionaires, seven-figure business owners, authors, and world-class experts sharing how they did it so you can too without experiencing the same obstacles they did. When your life and your business grow as a result of what you're about to discover, please call me and tell me about it. The number to leave a voicemail is 1-888-844-GROW. That's 1-888-844-4769. Long distance charges may apply. Dial now to call me, connect, share your personal story of how my interviews have helped, or share your current challenges and frustrations so I can connect you with an appropriate course, coach, or help you if you connect. Now, if you like this interview, please share it with a friend you think will benefit. They'll appreciate it, and I will as well. You can also connect with me on social media. Look for Daryl Urbanski, D-A-R-Y-L, Urban Ski, U-R-B-A-N-S-K-I, and add me so we can be friends. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy what I've prepared for you right here, right now. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Daryl Urbanski, your host as always, and today we have a returning guest. We are joined by none other than Bond Halbert, the living legend. Bond, through his father, got one of the most in-depth marketing educations in history. Gary Halbert passed all his knowledge on to Bond, like any father would their son, who they want to carry on the legacy and prove the stuff is in the family genes. Today, Bond has had massive success in his own right, selling millions of dollars of info products and guiding many businesses to success. His wisdom is sought out by some of the top marketers on the planet. He's been doing this for more than 30 years. In fact, he's been doing this for his entire life. This is Bond, not James Bond, but the same son who was stuffing, stamping, and sealing direct mail envelopes when he was only two years old. The same son who trained copywriting and advertising starting at the ripe old age of 10. The same son who played guinea pig for all the lessons Gary taught his protégés or used in his timeless newsletters. Gary taught Bond everything he knew about business. He went to mastermind meetings and seminars like other kids went to baseball games. Plus, he's now got decades of battle-tested, in-the-trenches experience and results for himself. It is such an honor, and I'm very excited to introduce you to him for our second interview today. Bond, thank you for coming back. I'm so grateful for your time. How you doing, my friend? Good. Thank you for such a powerful welcome. <laughs> well, it's, uh, I mean, it's its just a drop in the bucket for what you've accomplished. And I want to make sure people really do pay attention. And as a side note, that wasn't in it. Like, Bond, honestly, through knowing you, We've actually never met in person, but Bond has actually been a phenomenal just human being. Like, there's been times, well, I remember one time where I was having kind of a dispute with a different marketer that I didn't even feel like I instigated, and Bond was like, here, just give me a call, man, and we got on the phone, we talked for like an hour and a half or two hours or something, just such an approachable guy, easygoing guy, very perceptive, very intuitive, just a really good, just a really good human. Like, I just really value and appreciate you, because the fact that... I. You know, you can respect someone for their skills, but when you can also respect them as a person and for who they are and who they stand for, it's just an honor to have you back. I know I'm blowing hot air up your ass, but uh, <laughs> it's 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 the truth. It's not bragging if it's true. Like, you know, you, you've got this aura because of your dad's kind of his track record, but then you've created your own track record, and you're just really humble and, like I said, so approachable, and you've just always been nothing but helpful and generous and more than willing for whatever like hey bob want to do another interview sure daryl and it's it's just really great to have that yeah so thank you again this is going to be good everyone that's listening get a pen and paper you're going to want to write stuff down for sure so before the call started i'm kind of on a rant now but before the call started i mentioned we already did one interview so if people are just tuning in now please go check out that first interview it was fantastic one of the things I wanted to talk about, which is uh, a list of, uh, it's a checklist that I followed of your father's, and I wanted to kind of hear your spin on it, if you think it's still valid, how it would apply to today's world with the internet, um, and that's the kind of like a seven-step rollout plan. So for anyone listening, if you're launching a new product or business or promotion in general, Gary Halbert gave in the Boron letters, which were letters to his son Bond here, a kind of step formula for how he kind of launches a promotion. And so step one, or launches a business, I should say, and makes money. So the first step is to find a hot market, to start find a list first, a group of people. The second step is to find or create a product to sell. The third step would be to write a promotion describing the benefits of this thing and why someone would own it. The next step four would be to run a test, and it would be a thousand to five thousand letters because this would be direct mail. 
And the next step five would be analyze your results. And step six would be if results are good, mail another 20,000 to 100,000 more letters. Step seven, if results are still good, start rolling out and taking care of business. So it sounds like a really simple list. Is this something that you found still applies to today? Has it changed? Like, what? Well, the answer to that is yes and yes. It still applies, but it has also changed. Okay. Um, back then, it was a lot more costly to, it, you know, to run tests and to develop things. And so in the, it was also harder to do things in, in, a, in a better order, which even my father would have suggested. So let's take it step by step, one, uh, you know, one at a time. So, for example, the first step number one is identifying a hot market. And the way that you want to identify hot markets is, you know, if you get, if you get the education that I got really early on, you realize what you're really looking for is energy. You're looking for where people are spending an inordinate amount of money or an inordinate amount of time doing something that is either uh, it's about a passion or it's about you know put, taking care of a fear or a problem that they have and you know you realize it you recognize it in your own life to some degree but you you know it's like and and the timing of it so you're paying attention to you know somebody gets their kids first report card of the year and they got bad grades and right then is the time where they're willing to pay the most money to you know for a program that promises to help their kids get better grades or do better in school mm. um so you're but the the way and where you look for those things are different it used to be you know, you go to the SRDS, which is the Standard Rate and Data Service, and you'd look at lists where people spend a large amount of money, you know, trying to buy products that solve problems or fulfill dreams. And now what you want to do, not a lot of that has actually changed. There are some standards that you can always go to. There was a, a book series called The, the First Hundred Million was a book this guy had created all these little mini pamphlets that you could buy for you know long 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 time ago so you could buy them for like a, a penny or a dollar or whatever it was and you had to order like a minimum of six of them and they were weird little titles that were all like how to mm -hmm. and they were like you know how to kiss a girl or you know um how to how to learn to to fix something and the truth is, if you look at top Google searches, you're going to find they're actually it mimics basically those same that same list. So, what people's desires are has not changed. How they do it, or how they you know the technology has changed. Uh -huh. So, how to tell if a girl's ready to be kissed is um, is still applicable. Except now, what you have to do is you got to add to the equation dating apps and dating sites and things like that. So that stuff has changed. People's interests really don't change. They are, you know, very much similar interests as in, you know, how to build a business, how to make more money, how to get more time, you know, how to raise better kids, how to, you know, get further in life and, you know, make more money in less time and things like that. And so, um, but where you identify these markets and where you pay attention is, you know, kind of changed. So one of the things that you can do is instead of not say just the, the you can see where there's a lot of google searches so you know how google starts to fill out a string so if you start uh -huh. typing in how to and then you hit the letter a uh -huh. right you're going to you're going to get these things filled out uh -huh. and anything on the tops of those lists in the first half pages is going to be something a lot of people are interested in Mm. Right. Yep. So that's a new way of doing the old format, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you can do, you can do that that way. You also you you just pay attention to it's a, you know you you pay attention to the world around you and you say, man, I can't believe how much money people are spending to do X. Mm -hmm. And when something shocks you about how much money uh, people are spending to do something, that's a hot market. Mm. You know, and that's what I mean by irrational spending. You know, um, it, you know, the reason my dad always liked to use the word golf is because these guys would spend thousands of dollars to take a stroke or two off their golf game. Mm -hmm. You know, and to any normal human being, you're like, wow, you guys are, you know, you're wrapping the club around the tree because it took you two strokes to actually get that stupid little white ball in the cup <laughs> at the end of the green. Yep. So then what happens is if you play golf, you're like, okay, I get the frustration. Oh, I want to do improve. I was so close to hitting, you know, 72 or shooting par 
or whatever it happens to be and you know um, you know in doing your research and you you get it but there is a um, but you want to look for where people are spending an irrational amount of time and energy and money and um, if you're looking at if you look at like the Google search string thing you're finding huge markets mm -hmm. you know so if you say how to and then hit any letter you're gonna come up with stuff that a lot of people want to know about um, and so you can identify a market there um, the next step I believe you said was uh, to create a product correct uh -huh. that's actually in reverse order of the way that you actually should do it once you identify a hot market um, I think what you should do is you become an expert in that market and you can now expert is something that's relative so I, you know, I always use the example of watches because I'm a watch collector. And to all my friends, I'm an expert because I know how to change the battery of a watch and I know different watch brands. To me, a watch expert is somebody who swaps out dials and hands. And to that person, a watch expert is somebody who can tear them apart, clean oil and adjust the, um, the movement and get it all working smoothly again. To that person, somebody who can actually fix and craft broken parts for antique watches is a watch expert. To that expert, an expert is somebody who can actually design their own movements. So the point of what I'm trying to say is you just need to know more than the person you're selling to and mm -hmm. not pretend to know more than you do know. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a big key. So you don't want to come out and say, I'm the world's top watch expert, and the only thing I really know how to do is change battery, right? Yep, yep, yep. So, but what you do is you go through the process of research, which is to become a customer, shop the competition, see what it's like, read three or more books on a particular subject. Um, if you can, enroll in a course, join Facebook groups, join forums, um, poke around, and then eventually you'll come across a point where you're like, ah, if I only knew this at the beginning, if I only knew this then. So in the watch example, I, you know, I had found out eventually in my watch collecting um, days that, you know, you could get a Swiss watch for 40% off and you could get a Japanese movement watch for 50% off. And I wished I had known the tricks that I had figured out about negotiating and everything first. So then I can actually create a, uh, a whole book or product and because info products are usually what my dad suggested because you know they uh -huh. they don't cost you a lot to create it's just what they call sweat equity it's just time right mm -hmm. and so then I would create a um, a book that was like how to you know how to get a good deal on a watch and what watches to buy and so then what I could do is then take all the information that everybody else knows which is you know you know, Breguet, talk about Breguet and, and Rolex and the Swatch Group and a little bit of watch history and a little bit about which ones have prestige, which ones, you know, are who's who's who in the business, and then add the, the, the golden nuggets of negotiating that I had figured out. Because, you know, what I had figured out is what I could do is print off a really good price from the internet and I would take it down to a watch seller and I'd put that down on the glass and then look around in the case because they'd see the watch I was interested in and how much I could get it on the internet, right? Uh -huh. And then what I would do is, let's suppose that it was a watch that was selling for $300 retail and it was a Japanese movement, so I wanted it for $150. I'd start negotiating with that person, the watch seller, and the watch seller would get down to 170 and be pretty firm. And I'd say, okay, that sounds like a great deal. I'd open up my my wallet and lo and behold, the only thing in it was $150, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, oh, that's a great deal, but you know, I'm sorry, I only have $150. And, you know, at which point the watch, the watch seller would either take my deal or tell me no. And they always said yes, uh -huh. you know, and if I had known that trick, like it said, and so now I add that trick to my book and now I've got something that makes my book special and different than all the others, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And so this is just one example of, of the way that you can do it. And then what you do is you write, but here's where it's different from my dad. And my dad would do it differently too, which is before, if you wrote a promotion and you ran the promotion in, an, in, an, in a space advertisement for your new book on how to negotiate a good price on a watch, and you didn't have the book ready, it was called a dry test run and it was illegal. Okay. 
So the only way that you could do that is if you ran the po promotion, but you contracted with somebody else who wrote a book and said, I'm going to fulfill using selling, you know, deliver your book to it. So it would have to match it. So the problem was you couldn't actually, I would have to get how to negotiate for a good deal for a watch, but the promo had to describe somebody else's book. Right. Okay. So what you can do now, though, is research-wise, uh, you can design and do write your promotion first and then write the book because it's going to be so cheap to test, you don't have to worry about that. So what I would do is I would write you write your promotion first so you can say all the great things. So if I'm writing it and I'll say, and I'll show you how to negotiate so you can get at least 60% off of a Swiss watch. And by the way, I'm also going to give you the names of, of sellers of Swiss watches. And you write that in the promotion. You're like, yeah, actually, that's a good idea. So now in the book, I can make sure I list sellers of Swiss watches. Right. Right. So I can create a better book by writing the promotion and saying what I want to say first. first. Yep. So write your promotion for all info products and online products, you know, books or anything that you're creating. Even even regular businesses and services, write out the promotion first. And you write what we call dream copy, and then you're going to try and make all of that true. And whatever you can't make true, you back that down in the copy. And people back it up to where it's legal. I back it up until I can look my mother in the face and say, this is what's what the offer is with a straight face. And no, I'm not going to rip anybody off, right? Mm -hmm, so I'll back mm -hmm, it off to mm -hmm. it's absolutely dead on. I'm delivering everything I say it is. And so th I would reverse those steps and write the promotion first and then test the idea. You can do that so quickly now. So what you're doing is, you know, you go into forums and say, hey, I've done this report. I've, I've done this. I've compiled it or I've got this new book. Or you even pretend you're somebody else and you say, you know, I heard, you know, this guy named Daryl created this great book on, in, on how to negotiate and buy a watch. I bought it. It's really good. You know, if anybody else is interested, here's the link where you can get it and you can test the idea that way. Right before uh -huh. it cost you a lot of money in advertising and setting up a merchant account and everything was hard. Now there's you know um, you can set up a merchant yes. account to hook up to your iPhone. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You can just open up a PayPal account. You can have someone email transfer you the funds. It's really simple. Now with the test, is there a certain volume of traffic? Is there a place where you prefer to do the testing? Is it like does it matter if it's social media or a forum or paid? Is there any difference between those that you feel well, he, or one that someone should go to? Here's the difference. Anybody anybody can actually go into a you know a group or even create a group sell something to that group and then call themselves a successful online marketer or entrepreneur. Uh, I don't, <laughs> that never yeah, happens. I don't even really, like, I don't even really <laughs> like the name entrepreneur. I like small business owner or, or business builder or business owner. But in any case, um, the difference is a scalability. So what you first want to do is see if there's any interest amongst the hardcore fans. If you can't if you can't sell that report in a group filled with watch enthusiasts, you're never going to sell it on to paid traffic. Okay? So that's your first test. And then paid traffic is what's scalable. If you can make it work in a, in a Google ad and you can make it work or on Facebook advertising, then you can go to – you can grow with it. And you can follow it around. So when everybody, you know, dumps MySpace and goes to Facebook – then you you know you still can you can still make the same offer and it's just a different platform and now everybody when people leave Facebook because it's filled with negativity and politics and they go to Instagram, you can start selling through Instagram and then when they drop Instagram for whatever the next platform is you know you can still it it won't make a difference Jump. as long as your sales message gets as long as you can target the right people and you can give them the right message at the right time mm -hmm. and then um, you know it it. Then and the other thing is you got to make it profitable. So let's suppose that the book sells, but Google wants so much money that it's a break-even deal. Mm -hmm. So now what I do is I start looking at increasing the lifetime value of per per sale. So what I start doing is I say, um, you know what I'm going to do in the front of the book? I'm going to give them a list of good watch people that I'm going to refer them to and say that you know if you drop my name Bond 
to these watch guys or you come through my my portal let's say because that's even more trackable and controllable and you tell me what kind of watch you're looking for i'll send you to somebody who you can trust will sell you an authentic watch at a good price and then I get a commission off of that from those buyers. So now I'm increasing. Not only are you buying the book from me, that pays for that just covers the advertisement, but all the profit now comes from that side deal that I cut. Okay. Right. So it's like a back end offer, is what it is. And um, you know, so so you know, once you get the math, that's the other thing that's very important that my dad taught me and he t teaches all his students you're you're not in everybody's like i'm in the persuading business or i'm in the uh, copywriting or advertising business no you're in the arithmetic business you know mm. can i you know if you write a if you create a product that's good enough that i mean that's really good it practically sells itself and you're really just describing what the product is right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if you can write a brilliant description of something that's a dream product and then make that product come true which is the order i'm suggesting that that becomes very easy to do and the question now is a matter of can i get to can i make enough profit per sale to cover the ads you know um you know contribute to my overhead and then you know have money to go home and you know take my wife out to dinner or you know buy my kids toys so yep. the, you know, so then you're really in the numbers business and you must know your numbers and numbers, you know, you want to know all numbers. You want to know the number of people in your marketplace, if you can, how much it costs to get a hold of them, number of competitors. But you also want to know numbers for marketing reasons, because, you know, if I say here's a bunch of ways to write better copy, that's not as good as saying here's 132 ways to write better copy. Mm -hmm. The more numbers you have, the more specific, the more powerful your marketing is. So as a, as a marketer, you want to become addicted to numbers, all numbers, any numbers that relate to your business in any way, shape, or form. The, now, I want to ask because there's a, this sounds like such a straightforward model, and I love that you put the promotion first because you can test it easily. If, you're, if you can't get sales, maybe you're just testing for opt-ins to see if there's interest first. But it, you're not spending a year developing a product. I remember I was in a mastermind meeting once, and this guy had sat down, and it was his turn in the hot seat. And he was like, all right, so we got a million dollars in VC money. This was back in the early days of the Internet, and Flash websites had just come out. They were the real big <laughs> deal. But you couldn't SEO a Flash website because it was the graphics and stuff, yeah. you know? animation so he was like all right so we spent around eight hundred thousand dollars developing this technology that now can index flash websites and now we've got like a hundred hundred fifty thousand two hundred thousand dollars to sell it and everybody in the room we all like it was almost like there was a silent conversation went on long went on among everyone like dude you got it backwards <clears throat> you should have spent eight hundred thousand dollars selling that product or service and then gone and built the technology for the yeah. people so I think that's a really valuable tip, and I just wanted to give that for anyone that's listening. Like, you know, I've made this mistake as well. Are you spending a ton of time making something that nobody wants, you know, to buy? The the business graveyard is littered with world class world class products and services that nobody could sell, nobody wanted. So I think it's a fantastic tip. Now I know somewhere that people get tripped up is maybe they've got an amazing product, but they can't sell it. I remember someone saying like, uh, good marketing can sell a non-existent product. Bad marketing can't give away free gold. <laughs> okay. So do you have any tips for that if someone's listening and they're not a copywriter? Because we talked about find the market, then become an expert in that market, find that aha moment, create some sort of book or report on that to, to, to either sell up front or to generate a list of interested people on that subject mm -hmm. matter. How do you write that promotion? Is there any outline or guide? I mean, it's it's a really big topic, and we don't have, you know, we only got like a half hour, 40 minutes or so, you know, but is there any guideline that you could give someone yeah. to, to write there's, a promotion? There's a fantastic suck? trick that, you know, a lot of people know, um, a, a lot of professionals know uh, in copywriting that will write a lot of the copy for you. Uh, but before I give it to you, I want to also explain that, this, you know, what you have to do is do something ugly. F you know, don't worry about being perfect. It's better. It's better to do something half, half ass than to do nothing at all. And right. um, back to the, you know, one of the things that I tell everybody is when somebody gives you a new idea, test it immediately because it'll do two. And and go back to the person who gave you the idea and say, yeah, it worked if it did. 
and the reason is, is if something doesn't work, you don't spend a year building on something in a platform or a campaign that doesn't work. And if it does, if it does work, it'll be less and will be burned into your brain. And things change because it used to be that they told you not to put pictures in emails. And first time I did it, got a 400% increase in my click through rate. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, that's, you know, that's nonsense, you know, because I tested it. And so you're always testing stuff. So when it comes to the copy, don't worry about making good copy or great copy. First, just make get the real, the straightforward bullet points in the description as best you can. And where you want to get that is feedback. So you go to, if it's a service that you're offering, you want to go to Yelp. If it's a product, you want to go to Amazon. And you look at the good, the, the lengthy positive and negative reviews and pay particular attention to the negative reviews. People tell you the truth when they're drunk or angry. And so when you look at that, you look at what people are complaining about and you'll get copy that writes itself. And the example I always like to use is imagine that one of those little sticks that you stick a tennis ball in with a flick of a wrist, you send it 100 yards to give your dog exercise, right? Right, and right. you look at the positive reviews and they're like, oh, man, this is great. I used to come home feeling guilty. And you pay attention to the emotion words. So you say, I used to come home feeling guilty about, you know, uh, my dog being stuck in the house all day, but I was too tired to exercise it. And, you know, now it's, you know, I've got arthritis, but it's easy for me to now do this and I can give the dog all the exercise that it deserves. So guilt deserve, you know, the vet told that the vet told me will help it live a long life and stuff. And then some guy comes on and he complains. He's like, man, this piece of junk, such cheap plastic, it broke after th three throws. And another one complains, you know, I had one, but the dog took it off into the woods and I couldn't find it because it's green and the, you know, the, and it was fall, so I couldn't even find it. And so now you write your promotion and you say, you know, with the bonsai ball chucker, with the flick of the wrist, no matter how <laughs> tired you are, you can come home and you can give the dog all the exercise that it deserves and that your, the dog, vets are recommending so your dog lives a long, healthy life and you no longer have to feel guilty about, you know, coming home. And then, um, uh, you know, and unlike those other ones, you know, ours is made out of a high polymer plastic, so it won't break after you throw it three times. Mm -hmm. So the, the copy writes itself by taking a look at the good and the bad and be ready to reverse everything. So if something's good, you know, you might want to reverse it into the bad. Say this one's really strong and tough where you say, the, you know, it's not like those cheap ones. You know, you can flip it back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. And um, somebody says that this is really cheap, so you say ours is really strong. So play play back the the reverse and the positive side of each of those statements and arguments. But the key is to pay attention to those emotion words. You know that's what I add to this equation that nobody was explaining before to copywriters or to lay people is if you pay attention to those emotion words, that's where you're going to find the gold. Okay, and so you're going to write a list of list of the all those words down and then a list of the phrases that caught your eye. And you can do the same thing in forums as well. And the other place that I'd like to do research for is I like to ask places where I can get with real customers and be your own customer. I mean, a lot of people just fail to shop the competition and they fail to honestly say, you know, that was that really sucked. Their customer service sucked or they didn't tell me what to expect. And so when I got this in the mail, I was disappointed, you know, so you learn to change that experience and create a business that does the right thing by customers and, you know, beats mm -hmm. the competition that way. And then in a certain way, you know, you learn to build something so proud of that you can easily, you know, remind people, hey, you know, our goal is to give you such good service that you're going to tell your friends about it. You know, our goal is to create to create a harness that stops pulling. So whenever you see anybody's dog pulling a lot, you'll recommend it to us. And now you're setting the seed for referral business, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. You're, you're planting the seed for that. And so, you, you know, writing the copy is actually not that difficult when you learn how to when you learn how to do that. And again, you know, looking at reviews and coming up with your business strategy, that's not really new. What's new. I'm not adding to that. What I add to that is pay attention to emotion words, pay attention to numbers, everything that comes out of that that you can get.
Mm, mm, mm. So just kind of recap on that. So again, we've got a product. We know where we're at. We're just going to go online. All this stuff we can do from our computer yep. at home on, on a weekend and just read the reviews and pull out the power statements, anything that's emotionally triggered and look at the negative reviews and, and whatever we're creating has to try to kind of essentially build almost like a staircase on wherever the previous products and services mm -hmm. left it. Like I'm not going to sell typewriters today because no one's really using typewriters. I've got printers and computers and so I, whatever I create has to build on where technology and developments have brought us to now. So that's part of where this comes when you're launching a new product or service or even if you have an existing business and you're just looking to market it better, maybe you need to revamp your product or service, right? Because maybe it's outdated in some ways and you'll discover that when you go through these reviews. Yelp is for services and Amazon is for products. That's fantastic. Is there a format or a story? Like, how do you write copy? Do you just like, hey, this thing's amazing, and you use those words? Is there, because some people are like, you really have to emphasize the problem in the beginning. Is that always the case? I mean, no, I, that's it, a tough it, it, it depends on how much, you know, how aware people are of their problem. Um, it, the mm -hmm. better you, the better you can tell their story in a way that's better than them, you know, so for example, let's, I actually just bought a new leash for my dog. I have a dog that's a rescue and she just pulls and I can't get her to stop pulling because I got her when she was a year old already. And so I got this new harness for her and I'm like, man, I wish I had had that harness before. So, okay, that becomes a statement. And I say, you know, I've tried three or four different harnesses and, you know, nothing works. So what I can do is I can walk through and say, I can tell a story that's the same or worse than my prospect story and say, you know, I got this dog. She was a rescue. So she was, you know, she had these emotional issues that were already inbred in her. Now she, she's or bred into her, but she's, she's a lovely, wonderful, sweet animal. But every time another dog would come down the street or a kid would ride on a, on a skateboard or a bicycle, she's lunging and jumping at her. And I was afraid to even let my, uh, my, you know, mother or my wife walk the dog afraid that she would break the leash and go after that. And then, you know, the fear is there. She's going to bite somebody. And now now, you know, somebody's going to be suing me and I'm going to lose my home because, you know, the, the dog bit and I don't want to give up the dog. I love her and blah, blah, blah. Right. So I'm amping up the pain and, the, and I'm, I'm, I'm making it. Oh, I didn't even think about that. If my dog does break the leash and go bite somebody, I'm in trouble. Right. And so uh -huh. you're amping, you're, you're expressing your concern, your problem better than they are expressing the con same concern and the same problem. And then what you do is you go into the solution and you say, you know, with this new harness, I tried three or four different harnesses. And the, and the last time she actually did break the leash. And so I went, <laughs> I went to, and I asked the manager, I said, Hey, what's the, what's the best harness you have to stop pulling? And they said it was the, you know, X, Y, Z dog stopper or ultimate dog stopper, whatever. <laughs> and so I said, you know, are you sure? And they said, yeah, try it. If you don't like it, it's guaranteed. You, you bring it back and, you know, we'll give you all your money back, but it'll work. I put it on and it was like a dream come true. All of a sudden, the dogs were not yanking me anymore. I can even hold a cup of coffee in my left hand. Now even my 70-year-old mother could watch the dog with that. And I don't have to fear that, you know, she's going to get hurt or get knocked over from the dogs pulling. It's that miraculous, you know. And hmm. you're telling the story. You're telling their story. And a lot of the times in those reviews, you're going to get that story. And if you go through the the process as a prospect, go through. It's not just buy the buy it. You know, you want to buy the cheap one and go see what it's like to have the problems and the worry, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you want to know, you know, how good it feels to have the solution to that problem. And that way, you know, you'll be better at writing the story. But great stories are not created. Great stories are found. And that's a big mistake people hmm. don't, uh, who are newbie copywriters or, or don't write copy, don't understand. And the story is the story of your your best prospect. Your, so your story is the is the nightmare the worst nightmare that your customers actually experience and the good part of the story is the incredible emotional you know relief and and wonderment and you know ha happiness that people get after the product does exactly what it was supposed to do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then that becomes the best story and you don't always need a story you know i mean um you know you don't you know is if if your product is so good 
if and you design the product well enough, just describing it should be good enough. And then you know your your hmm. risk reversal, your guarantees, and stuff like that will be you know taking away everybody's objection into buying. Right, 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 right. So, all right, let's recap here. So we had find a hot market, look for people that are spending a lot of energy, time, or money on something. Yeah, so I call it the Google A to Z. It's funny, actually. Uh, both of us are friends with Ben Simkin, a previous guest on the show, and I was speaking at one of his mastermind meetings, and that's I called it the Google A to Z. I think that's a fantastic, fantastic way to look because it's just it's where the people are, yeah. right? It's not You're not creating anything. It's where... When people don't realize that when someone does a Google search, like they're... You know, allows Google to... If you do keyword research, you're, in some ways, you're reading people's minds, and Google just gives that... the predictive searches mm -hmm. to you and like you said there it's an order of search volume so you can just check and see and that and the amazing thing about a search engine is a lot of times not a hundred percent of the time but a lot of times it's like a river of recurring demand recurring hunger or interest if I went to Singapore I'm looking up top 10 things to do in Singapore before I get there or when I'm right there but if I've been living there for a while or after I get to Singapore I'm probably not going to search for that keyword but if, if you take a look and Google tells you that there's 50 50,000 people every month searching for 10 things to do in Singapore, then those are probably 50,000 new people, or a large percentage of them are new, which means month after month after month, there's a new wave of interest, which could be new buyers for your product or service. So again, that's some people <clears throat> at this point, some people with a lot of the stuff you know, Bond, you make it sound so easy and so simple. A lot of people may like oh, uh, glaze over how powerful some of the things that we've talked about here are. Even technology today like Amazon, you have to appreciate before the internet, it would cost tens of thousands of dollars to get this research. There was no single place documented that you could go on with your smartphone just when you're killing time at a doctor's office or whatever, you know, waiting at a red light and go and do research on your competitors and find out what all their customers think in the reviews. I mean, a lot of that stuff, you know, was really hard to come by and all this is at your fingertips and it makes it almost so easy people take it for granted. So find a hot market become an expert in that market. You know, it doesn't mean you have to become a world-class expert. <clears throat> you just need to become familiar, more familiar than the people that you'd be selling to so you can act as a guide. Go until you find some sort of aha moment or a problem that you over, uh, overcame and solved. And then you can create something to give away to other people or sell to people to either build a list or get the ball rolling on, you know, on building a business in that industry if that's where you want to pursue. And then but before you go and create the product and all that, write the promotion for it first. Start with dream copy, you know, then b writing the most amazing thing, all the stuff you'd want to include, the bells and whistles, it's the most amazing product, it makes you taller, it makes you stronger, it helps you live longer, you know, all this sort of stuff. And then back it off to where you can fulfill on your promise. And then promote it, run a test. And like you suggested, go to a forum or find somewhere where there's a lot of these fans, the hardcore fans first. And if you can't get them to buy, then maybe there's something wrong with your promotion. And then after you get something that people seem to want, it's worthy. It's a worthy investment to get paid traffic to work because what you mentioned is then you, like f MySpace once was bigger before Facebook. You know, it's, the internet changes quickly. If you can afford to write a check and know what you can afford to spend, you can always just hop to whatever the new tech is or pay the expert to get your Snapchat up or whatever, you know, the new thing is because you know how to get a customer and you know what the, the buy buttons are, the pain points. Mm -hmm. And that's it, and that you're in the arithmetic business. And so if you have a promotion and it's not quite profitable, is there a way that you could tack on some other products or services or uh, or refer someone else's business and get a percent of that commission? How can you make more money that you're in the math business, the arithmetic business, you have to know your numbers? And then in building this promotion, you kind of grazed over it, but you said start with the bullet points and description first. And I think that's something that a lot of people that are no copy, I mean, it's... Again, we call it black belt eyes when I had martial arts. Like, you've been doing it so long, you forget that that's an important point, you know, because it's just what, of course, why wouldn't you do that? But bullets, 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 bullets. For anyone that doesn't know what a bullet is, a bullet is like a one sentence, maybe two sentence kind of punch that have like some sort of feature or benefit. It's supposed to be like a pow statement, you know. It doesn't have to be a long statement. It's supposed to be kind of like just hard hitting something, you know. A, Bond, do you have any favorite bullets that you've ever written? I don't want to put Actually, you on the spot, no, but just as an I'll example. I'll do even better than that. I'll give you a brand new way of writing bullets that, that nobody really knows sure. about because I invented it. Um, okay. Everybody knows that a bullet is what basically it's a list of your features, and you never have to share with a with a product owner. 
you never have to get them to tell you what the features are of their product. They know this. This is the part that anybody can write. And then they, Mm -hmm. you know, but of course, you're not selling the feature. You're selling the benefit. People don't buy a drill. They're buying a hole, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And so what you want to then do is so you want to take a table and you want to list four columns. And on the left, you put a, a feature. Then you put the benefit. Then you put the emotional benefit. Then you put the benefit of the emotional benefit, okay? And sometimes you'll have just two, sometimes you'll have three, sometimes you'll have all four. So let's suppose that I'm selling a self-defense course, and one of the features in the course is I'm going to teach you five killer judo techniques. And the, uh, uh-huh. the benefit of those judo techniques is they allow you to take down even bigger opponents. The emotional uh-huh. benefit of that is that you're going to feel safer, the benefit of feeling safer is you're now free to explore places that you otherwise wouldn't were afraid to go. Mm. So the bullet that you write is with these five killer judo techniques, you'll be able to take down bigger opponents and you'll even feel safer go- traveling to places where before you were too scared to, tr- to check out. Mm. So it opens up a bigger part of the world. Um, with this, you know, this uh, with the extra fine steel carbide tip, you can get the kind of um, the kind of quality clean holes, and you'll be able to take such pride in your workmanship, and eventually you'll get, you know, your price, your pieces will be coveted over other craftsmen because they see the quality of that work, right? You know, uh-huh, so you're uh-huh, you're uh-huh. you're you're changing these. So and you can flip them back and forth and around. Like you can start. You know, once you once you filled out the table, you might start with this. Uh, you know, with the benefit or the benefit of the emotional benefit. But what it is is feature benefit, the emotional benefit, the benefit of the emotional benefit, because you know yeah. there is. Okay, with um, we have our team of IRS, uh, our team of tax experts that have worked with the IRS. They have over three thousand collective hours and experience dealing with um, with audits. Um, the benefit of that is you're sure that you're getting the best representation. The emotional benefit of that is the fact that you're going to be able to you know sleep well or stop worrying, right? The benefit of the mm-hmm. emotional benefit of the benefit of not having to worry anymore is you can get back to focusing on growing your life and you know stop wasting time sitting there stressing stressing out. I love that. So it becomes the you know with the with the you know with our firm and the thirteenth that you know fifteen thousand hours of a, of experience you can rest assured and sleep well at night knowing that you're getting the best you know you, that your stuff is being handled by the best professionals possible and you can get back to building your life and enjoying it. That is so yeah that's so powerful. I'm feeling giddy inside right now because that's that makes it so easy to write really powerful meaningful that's the other part meaningful i mean that's where a lot of people miss out it's got to be meaningful to the end listener yeah. right relevant for them and their lives and that's just such a this is a hack it. that i'm putting together in a new book of mine that um you know about writing copy and you know what i have to do is i can i have all the classic lessons that everybody teaches you know my dad and everybody taught uh, before him and you know people have kind of um with my dad's lessons i didn't see a lot of people improving upon them okay Hmm. because my dad was a true master and an expert um Mm -hmm. but when you know you talked about my education starting off at being so young at 10 this is what happens when you start learning at 10 because you start applying this stuff and you go wait a minute you dissect what are some of the best things that you see and then i create formulas and hacks so that you can easily write bullets the body copy the story the headlines the ps's you know the back end copy you know re- doing research all of that stuff i try and make it so that it's something that that when, you know now that i've explained it the way that i did every one of your listeners can go write bullets yeah no that's that's why i got giddy that's such a good and you can pump up those bullets by adding numbers. You notice that I like to add numbers. Mm-hmm. So I like to say 14,000, you know, hours of, of collective experience. Or I'll say, you know, with our, you know, our, um, you know, five killer judo techniques or whatever it is. So there's, you know, you'll go back and use the similar things that you use to punch up headlines. You'll go back to use them to punch up the bullets as well. You know, you want to start with the features. Everybody knows the features of their product. And the Mm -hmm. other thing that the other suggestion I'm going to give you is if you're doing branding, if you're if you're if you're working with creating something about yourself, 
you actually kind of want to get somebody else to do that because the truth is there are two signs that your copy is really good. Um, and one of one of those signs is that the, the client's usually too nervous to run the copy, right? Because it sounds so uh. good. You're like, I don't know if I want to say that about myself. And I've written things uh. for clients and they're like, well, you know, it sounds so good. I'm like, it's based on exactly what you told me. Is any of that not true? No, it's true. It's just the way that you make me sound sounds so good, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. They have that self-limiting, yeah, self that's self-limiting. It's called an intrinsic bias. Yeah. And there, there's a, a riddle. My, uh, it was like some joke. My girlfriend was like, I don't get this. And it was, it was like a doctor and their son are walking down the street, but the doctor's not a man. How is this possible? And it's for some people, they're like, I don't know. And they come up with like weird answers, but it's because the doctor is a woman. And it's supposed to reveal an intrinsic bias that people naturally tend to think a doctor would be a man. And so like what you're talking about is we have preconditioned self-limiting thoughts or beliefs that may just limit you from putting your best marketing material out there, which in some ways is preventing you from helping people that could really help but benefit from it because of that, right? That self, it's, that, uh, that self It's easier image. to describe your wife as Wonder Woman than to call yourself Superman, you know? Right. And so, you know, in, in those cases, in those instances, what I suggest you do is actually swap or get somebody else to write the bio for you and punch it up. And in some cases, you know, you, you know, you're, you're going through the product that you created and somebody else might be able to see more bullets coming out of it. Now, I, in my case, I'm hoping nobody can see more bullets than I do, um, <laughs> you know, because because that's my job. But yeah, getting back to on track with the list, you know, write the you know write the bullets, and then you, you know the bullets don't change per ad. And then in each promotion, you want to kind of create three different headlines, three different maybe openings, and three different offers or closings. And then, you know, you test out which ones work, but the bullets for the most part, they are the bullets, you know, they are the features. You're not changing, if you're selling a car, you're not changing the fact that it's red. You're not changing the fact that it's a six cylinder. You're not changing that. What you're trying to do is describe that the bullets stay the same no matter which promotion or offer you make. So your offer could be drive the car for seven days. If you don't like it, bring it back. Um, your offer could be, you know, that I'm going to, you know, the car will normally list for $5,000, but if you're willing to take it this weekend, I'll let it go for 4500 because I need, I'm trying to get out of here and go to a concert. It could be whatever, whatever the offers could change, but you know, the part that, you know, you're going to feel the power of that V8 under the engine and, you know, feel, you know, know, and know that, you know, you're, you, you can take off right off to any red light with lots of power and horsepower under the hood. That's not going to change. So mm -hmm. if you write those bullets first, you're, you know, mm -hmm. that's the, that's the best place to start. And if, if the features and the benefits and the bullets are actually good enough, you know, a lot of times, you know, it's the, the, the headlines just causing grab, trying to grip enough attention to get people to read them bullets, you know, and the, if the offer is compelling and the mm -hmm. offer, you mm -hmm. know, the offer is a sound, decent offer, you know, there's lots of stuff to try. Right, right, right. Do you have any uh, hacks on how to do that or come up with different offers? If anyone's kind of stuck with creativity, like, well, I got this thing, but how do I offer it in seven yeah. different ways? I mean, it's like any color you want as long as it's black. Like, how do That's I come where, up with different You know what? Everybody talks about offers, swipe files. You know? For those who don't know, a swipe file is just a, a file of other people's promotions. And that, my dad coined the term really, um, it, or at least popularized it. I think he coined it. Um, but it was he really did himself a disservice because what people started doing was taking his ads and then just replacing the ad with their products. And that's a really, you know, first of all, it's illegal. That's copyrighted mm. material. But the other part the, the, that's bad with that is, you know, that's all designed for a specific type of product. And it doesn't always fit. And it will feel incongruent to the reader. It doesn't flow. But what you want to do is you want to create. Here's what I think you should do when it comes to swipe files is you take those ads and you cut them up. And you put the headlines all in one file. You put the openings all in one file. You put all the bullets in a different file. You put the PS in a different file. And you put the offers in a different file. Hmm. So there's a bunch of different offers that are there, you know, and there are buy it. We won't charge your, you know, we won't charge your credit card for 30 days. It used to be, you know, we won't cash your check for 30 days. 
and uh, but we won't charge your credit card for 30 days. Mm-hmm. Um, buy it, and if you don't think it's worth two times the, the value of what you got for it, um, the longer guarantees, the better. And people make this huge mistake, and you know they hate processing refunds. So they won't make an agreement that increases sales if it increases refunds by one refund, right? And that's silly because the math comes out that you make a lot more money by the longer you Uh extend a guarantee. The truth is people forget to refund. Most people are refunding, making that decision the minute they buy. They're like, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to mess with it for a month, and then I'm going to refund it right before that month is out. Uh Well, if you give them six months, they forget about it. You know, it's not even on their credit card statement to remind them, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. when they see it, at the, you know, I buy it in January. I get that statement for January's purchases. I'm looking through to find out what I can refund to get a little bit of my money back. And you go, wait a minute, there's that one. No, wait, I got six months to refund that. I'm going to continue to play with that one a little bit. And then by the time June rolls around, you, it's completely out of mind. And here's the other thing, your credit card companies, no matter what, your merchant accounts Mm -hmm. force you into a 120 day uh, or 100, 150 or 120 day return policy anyway. So you might as well offer it. It makes you sound like, you know, the most magnanimous, wonderful human being, you know, that so forth. But look at other people's offers, um, and they can be, and, and just think about how can you apply it to your business. I'm writing copy. I'll deliver your copy in two weeks, or it's free. Um, you know, I'm actually, you know, there was an offer I was going to put out, which is marketing expert, you know, will use his own mo- uh, own profit, his own profit, excuse me, his own money to prove that you're, that you're, um, to prove that the copy he writes for you works. And the way it works is you pay me $15,000 to write an ad. I write the ad. You write me a check. I don't cash that check. Um, and you run the, you run the test ad. If it doesn't work, I reimburse you the cost of the, uh, the cost of the test. Right. Uh-huh. So that's, you know, you're just rearranging the deal and saying, you know, copywriters using his own money to, to, to prove that he can outbeat your, you know, he can beat your control. control. Um, so, you know, look at everybody else's offers, the, the strongest one and the best one, but you can only make this if it's guaranteed to work, that there's no way if they use it, it doesn't work. It fails is a double your money back guarantee because the competition is scared to use it. And often that allows you to write in your copy that, you know, look, remember the, you know, other companies may say they offer these services, but ours is the only one with, that, with a double your money back guarantee. It makes you go, oh, well, I'm going with them over everybody else. Um, but you got to make sure that, you know, it, mm-hmm. it'd be a lot longer for me to explain how to word that perfectly. But you want to you want to do that only when there's absolutely no chance it won't work for anybody else. Or the number of people it won't work for is so, so tiny that it's worth all those additional sales to, to honor oh, that agreement. Now, when yeah. we do it, we do it in a way that nobody ever takes you up on it. You know, and what we do is we say, you know, you have 30 days, no questions at ironclad, no questions asked guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, you can refund, return it, get every penny back. Um, but if you do try it and you, you send us this, that, and the other that prove that you actually did give it a go and it doesn't work, then we'll send you double your money back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's the strongest offer you can make. Um, but, you know, take a look around you, all the different offers you see, which are, you know, um, you know, this normally costs nine ninety nine each. Um, but, you know, for today only, if you spent $19, we're going to send you three. Right. You know. So the offers are all around you. You see them in the pharmacy. You see them in um, you know retail shops. You see them online. You see them in print ads and everything. Just you know, start every time you look at one of those offers. Say, what could I? How could I structure an offer like that for my business or for whatever I sell, whether it's a product or a service? And you you'll be able to come up with offers easy. Now. I have two other things I want to ask you about before we're, we're out of time here. One is sweepstakes or giveaways, and the other one, what was the other one? It literally, well, let's start with that one while I try to figure out what the other thing was. That wasn't, that wasn't even the main one, but how do you feel about sweepstakes and giveaways? Is that an effective way to market? Oh, there was two-stepping. 
That was it. So do you believe, are you a big fan of two-stepping? Are you more of a fan? And for those who don't know, two-stepping is where you try to get a lead first. So you try to get their name, contact info, or do you just upfront sell? Or are you more of a fan? Because the, the, and part of why I bring this up again for the listeners, like with two-stepping, say you're going to generate leads and your page or your whatever gets a 50% conversion rate. Well, you have to send a thousand people to your site to get 50 people to convert into, or to get 500 to convert into leads. And then after that, depending on your sales letters, conversion rate, if it converts 1%, 2%, 3%, 5 8 whatever that is, you know, now you're only going to get it off half of the leads. Whereas if you put your letter f- up front, you would get your, maybe it'd be a lower percentage, but you would have more eyeballs on your offer. So I'm just kind of curious of which, how you feel about, about that two-stepping versus going r- up front. Well, I'm going to answer them in reverse order. Um, let's talk about sweepstakes first. Sweepstakes, I um, I do like. I think that you should do offers and raffles and stuff like that. And it's a great way to grab um, usernames and to grab lists. And, you know, you want to, I think I mentioned in the last podcast about getting primary email addresses. Uh-huh. And so what you do with sweepstakes is you say, you know, remember when you're a winner, you only have 14, you know, 48 hours to collect. So be sure to enter a primary email address you check often to see if you've won, right? Uh-huh. And then what you do is you let them all win because you give, you, 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 some of the people actually, most people just win a coupon that's a discount, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a couple people actually win the grand prize or whatever it is you're offering. And then you show that people won that grand prize. But, you know, you say, you know, one in every three is a winner of some sort because what they're winning is a coupon to get a discount to buy, get your product for half off or, you know, right. something along those lines. And then you've captured their, 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 their contact info so that you can sell them stuff later. So that, that is, that is a, I think, I think it's a wonderful, you know, way to, you know, start capturing leads. Now, when it comes to two steps, here's the deal. If it is, um, if it is something for which I'm going to sell once, it's going to be a one and done, which is rare for me because I personally, you know, if you come to me and you want to learn how to get email open rates that everybody say are amazing, that means you probably would also like to learn me, teach you how, you know, have me teach you how to write killer copy. And if you want me to teach you how to write killer copy, there's a good chance you might want to hire me to look over your copy and do a critique. And if you're willing to hire and do, you know, for a critique, then there's a good chance that you're, you know, you might want me in your mastermind session brainstorming new ways to do business or to create, come up with more income or to find new sources mm-hmm. of income and so forth. So I'm not usually a one and done kind of guy um, when it comes to what I sell and what I offer. So for me, a two-step program, uh, two-step offer allows me to come back and offer those people other products and services, or offer them a- multiple times. So mm-hmm. I like two steps, and two steps, you know, usually involve like, you know, if you email this, I'm going to send it to you for free. But what I do is different. Is I first teach them something. I want them to go aha, and I want some light bulbs going off in their head, right? You know, Uh I'm sure you have a lot of guests that tell people what to do, but not exactly how to do it, you know, because the how to do it ends up being by my course, right? (laughs) Right, right, right. But if I tell you, I'm going to show you my way of of writing headlines that, you know, in under four minutes that nobody can ignore, you're going to go, oh, I want to hear that because, you know, look at everything. And I can make the statement, everything I just taught you in the last 40 minutes is worth the price of any course I'm going to offer you alone. Right. right. <laughs> so show a little good faith up front, teach a little something, get a few light bulbs going off, build that trust. Then what you do is you offer some more goodness by offering, go and opt into my list and I'm going to send you this product or service for or this pamphlet or, you know, I'm going to send, you know, I actually send off um, some stuff through the mail. So I get snail mail addresses as well. And so I get an email and a snail mail address to con- uh, a contact info, and then I make my offer. And if the offer that doesn't come through, I can offer it again. Maybe I hit you at the wrong time. Maybe I maybe I made that offer at the end of the month, and you just spent all your money on rent, right? Uh-huh. And now I want to make that offer again on the Friday after you know the first Friday of the month after you've paid your rent, right? When uh-huh. you when you've got some cash in your pocket. 
And the, so I might make the same offer a couple times. And then if, let's suppose I run that out and you say, look, you're really not interested in that. You, maybe you're interested in this other offer that's very, that shows a similar interest. So let's go with, back with the golfer. And I'm telling you about my golf book. And, you know, you know, I've said it three times, but you're not interested in the golf, golf book. And then I send you an email and I say, hey, you know what? These guys that I know of in the lab, they just started this Kickstarter campaign. And I've tried their prototype. And that driver really allows you to whack that ball an extra 10 or 30 yards with with laser-like accuracy i love this thing you might want to get in on it before you know before um they run out of the the spaces for the kickstarter campaign because they're only going to create a thousand of them right Uh and so i might want to offer other stuff so that's the big you know a lot of big benefit of the two-step is two things one is most of the time two steps are done because the product price point is expensive Right. Uh And they don't have enough room to say all the things they need to say and about how great what it is you're about to do is. And so they need a second. um, They need to send you a report, because if they put that if they printed that report in the newspaper, it would cost them 100 grand in ad costs just to print that. Right. 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 So what they want to do is collect your name and address so that they can, you know, priority mail or FedEx you a new report. Um. And so that so if the, it's higher priced, you like two steps for that reason alone. I like two steps for the fact that you you have multiple chances to actually turn that ad into a profit by you know making making multiple pitches. If it is a very low priced offer, and it is something I'm only going to sell this once. I have no intention of selling anybody anything else, and I don't think that way. I don't think that they're you know. There, um, Clayton Makepeace was talking to these guys who was doing these infomercials. He's called up and he's like, so what are you guys doing with all the names of your buyers? And he's like, they're like, nothing. (laughs) What are you you talking? (laughs) He goes, let me get on a plane and come talk to you. (laughs) Right. You know, because there's always something else you can sell. So capturing the names of your leads as well as the names of the buyers is still very valuable information. So I don't think that way. But the only time I would think that way is my advertisement is meant to get you to do one little step and it's a really quick step and it doesn't take a lot of a lot of selling to get you to do it because the price point is low the decision is very easy one for the consumer to make and i'm not planning on getting you to make another decision so for example tourist industry right if i'm Uh trying to get you to you know take a look at um, my glass bottom boat ride right you know, if you don't buy, if you don't, if you don't buy a ticket to the glass bottom boat right now, I'm not going to sell you on a future in the future. The chances of you coming back to the same tourist destination is slim. Right. You know, so in those cases, I would, I would say, don't bother with a two step. Just right, sell it. Right. Right. Just okay. sell the damn thing. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So again, great interview. Tons of fantastic info. Talked about how to find a market, how to roll out the product, how to create the promotion, how to write copy that converts, how to write things that's going to be compelling, not just on a, on a functional, logical level, but on a deeper emotional level. Uh, beautiful little formula for how to write amazing bullets. Headlines, for those that don't know, are often just better bullets or your best bullets. Um, not always, but many times in the case. Uh, we, you even gave us an example like for the test, create three headlines, three openings, and three offers or closings, and that your bullets will pretty much be the same for all of them. So you've got three different things to test. You can combine those in a few different manners. Uh, we talked about uh, risk reversal, how you're already you're forced into giving people their money back. So might as well say it up front because it's almost like, like think of someone's first encounter. Maybe it's the first time they've gone bungee jumping or skydiving or the first time they've been intimate with someone or anything that they where there's a nervousness about is this a right decision or not. And they're on that cliff about to step off, right? They're just not sure if they're going to regret this after. You, that's where you want to say this stuff because it's just going to make it easier and make them feel better and calmer and safer about that pulling that trigger at the last moment. And like Bond said, if you're forced into it, you might as well say it 
anyhow. And if you can make a stronger case, you may have to give more money back, but that comes back to the point where you're in the arithmetic business. How much do you believe in your product or service? You know, what results do you know it's going to get people? You know, how much we stand behind that? Even if most people are genuine and have amazing integrity. So for the most part, you won't be taken advantage of. For the people that do take advantage of you, you know, puts a condition in there too to try to protect yourself on that. Like Bond mentioned, you have to prove that you've used our product or service as, you know, prescribed, you know, and then we'll give you your money back, something like that, and make the boldest uh, guarantee that you can. And then we talked about a couple of different ways to build a list and an audience. I mean, sweepstakes, it's fantastic, two-stepping, when and how to use it. And Bond, I don't even know if you realize it, but you also gave uh, a kind of a, f a formula for following up on the back end. So I like first give results in advance, you know, just before you even ask for anyone's contact info, be of help, be of value up front, then ask for their contact info, but have something to trade for it, something valuable, then make your offer, then make your offer again with a different timing, then make your offer again with a different timing and maybe sweeten it a little bit. And after that, you said maybe you'll promote affiliate offers. So that's a way for you to follow up with people and try to monetize what you're doing multiple ways versus just one way, you know, straight up. So I think that's fantastic. And then you also broke down when you would two-step or not two-step. So we really kind of walked through this whole thing soup to nuts. Um, again, people listening may want to listen to this call again just to get everything out of it. It's a really juicy call. And, and for those, I just, again, want to emphasize, don't think of any of this as oversimplistic. It takes a lot of expertise to really simplify something. That's when you know someone's mastered something because a lot of the stuff, even when we talked about the Google searches, there's really powerful fundamentals, you know, beneath this that make it work. And uh, it's, it can work for you if you just listen and follow the steps and trust the process. So now, Bon, was there anything that I didn't ask you about that I should have asked you about? Yeah, you should say, how can people get a hold of me or find out what I'm doing and up to? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's coming. That's coming for sure. I think anyone who knows what they're on, they're all chomping at the bit right now. My, because, yeah, Bond, so how do we do that? The, my goal is to always make everybody's head spin and their hands hurt by taking notes and going, I can't believe he said all of this and told me exactly what to do. I know. I got like five pages. <laughs> the, well, there's a couple things. Okay, first, there's I run, I have a site called bondhalbert.com. Yep. H-A-L-B-E-R-T. Bond is just like James Bond. Sometimes people can't believe that's my first name. But bondhalbert.com is a good way to go and get on my list. And so you can be alerted to things that we're doing. And, of course, we own the GaryHalbertLetter.com. Mm -hmm. On Facebook, if you want to, what you want to do is you want to join the Gary Halbert Copy Club. And um, on there, what you want to do is j there will be some questions. And when they say, what, you know, how did you hear about Gary Halbert? You can say through a Sun Bond or mention this podcast and I will add you from that. So, you know, um, to make sure that you get in. But Perfect. what I'm working on is, you know, we both have a mutual friend, Ben Simpkin. And I'm That's actually right. here with Ben. And we are designing a what I consider to be one of the best events for marketing ever put on um it's going to be in vegas you know so 2018 vegas june 12th is going to be the uh, vegas is going to be the place to be because i'm planning on there we're going to have um 11 super great marketers who have been handpicked and they're not handpicked because of celebrity status or names, although several of them are famous, they are working, as you would say, in the trenches, you know, copywriters and marketers that make lots of money, um, mm -hmm. that have different interests in different fields, and we're signing each of them to specifically explain exactly how to write headlines, how to do research, how to get, you know, write bullets, how to you know, create back end offers and all that. And then we're going to have a bonus day, uh, VIP day for people who want to pay a little more and stick around. And then all of those experts are going to actually focus and hone in on how to make your businesses better. So if you are, um, and it's great just to even, you, it's such a great education watching them do it with all these different types of businesses. But what they'll do is we'll take a look at your marketing. And if we see, when we see areas of improvement or where it's broken, we will fix it or improve it. And then we're going to show you, new, you know, have you consider new sources of, of customers and more buyers and how to get that and then how to get more money out of the people that you are selling to and give you and share with you specifically tailored to you what are the best back end pieces and, you know, back end offers that you can make 
and it's you know the 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 goal is to do a no holds barred you know not hold back anything give exact concrete step by step instructions on doing everything and zero pitching so a lot of events they teach you how to do stuff but they don't they or what they tell you what to do they don't show you how to do it um, a lot of events, their main goal is to sell you on something else. And, you know, what happened was Ben told me, he said, you know, we're going to do a mastermind. Do you want to come do it in June? And I said, what dates? And he gave dates that were really close to my dad's birthday. And I said, no, um, why don't we move that and just I'll invite and get, you know, my dad's mastermind, his protégés together. And we'll make it the largest gathering of Gary Halbert protégés ever assembled. And we'll just do a a, a rocking, you know, how how to get it all done. And that's, so it's going to be it, so awesome. Instead of being like, you know, that last hour that you spent listening to me, Babylon, it'll be like that. Except it'll be a uh, it'll be twelve experts, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. each sharing and diving deep into each of the topics over two days. And then on the third day, it's going to be all about focusing in on your specific business and stuff. So it's going to be one incredible event, and um, you know, and I'm, you know, I mean, I I got to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have even thought about putting or dreamed of doing something like this without the help of a guy like Ben. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Ben Simkin is, um, he's sold, you know, over 1.45 billion dollars worth of products and services through Facebook. So I mean, he. He's he's a very sharp cookie, and um, you know, with his with his team and infrastructure behind us, it allows um, people like Kevin and myself to actually focus in on doing nothing but delivering the best the best content and marketing advice anybody's ever put out. So you know, uh, that's that's what we're working on right now. And you know, when you called, I was actually writing, helping to design what the event is going to provide. That's awesome. I think it's going to be a fantastic event. Obviously, the marketing knowledge know-how will be top-notch. Uh, it's just a it's a it's a marketing geeks wet dream just to be in a room with all of Jerry Halbert's protégés and his sons and be able to have them look at their business, their projects. But also the next part is the personal relationships that you're going to build. I mean, everyone there is so accessible. I said at the beginning, and it's so true. I mean, it's just a, it's an easy way to just get to connect with everybody. I mean, like attracts like. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I know for me, live events and conferences have been life-changing. That's, that's how I met Ben. That's how I heard about Gary Halbert. I mean, these are a couple of things that have had big impacts on my life in various ways. You know, Ben, because of Ben, I got to fly around and go to some mastermind meetings. Him and I have been in touch over years. I've learned a lot from him. I, hopefully, I've been able to share some stuff with him as well. And, you know, it's just, it's such a beneficial thing. It doesn't happen from sitting in your room on the other side of a screen just chatting with people over social media. You need that face-to-face, kneecap-to-kneecap, belly-to-belly conversations. You need to have the time and the space in your life to sit down and not be distracted by the little fires that come up and all the things that can happen. If you're serious about growing your business and, and mastering your skill set that you need as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as a marketer, you know, events like these are invaluable because of what you learn. And it's not even the things that you learn directly always. It's things you learn like by, through either osmosis or just even just being like immersed in that room. You soak it all in. You overhear conversations people having. You see an example. Someone else asks a question you never even thought of. It's just such a powerful way to condense and learn a lot in a short period of time. And I just, I couldn't vouch for you or Ben either either of you more. Oh, so for you. those that have yeah, for those that are interested at all and have access to get to Vegas, highly recommend you check it out. Of course, the Gary Halbert letter is a phenomenal resource. It's free, it's online, go check it out. Of course, there's also the free Facebook group, the Gary Halbert Copy Club that Bond mentioned. Go and, and ask to join that. That's another way to connect with some people and maybe meet people before you even get to the event. And then there's Bond Halbert, B-O-N-D-H-A-L-B-E-R-T dot com. You can go to as well. And is there a URL for the event or they should just go to the Copy Club and, and kind of they'll find out about it there? They should just go to the Copy Club. You know, um, right now we've been, you know, since I spoke to you last, we've been working on lots of different projects and um you know i i wrote the very first book on copy editing ever ever published 
Um, I, I was actually stunned that nobody had ever thought of that before at first. And so I'm working on a second book, but I just dropped everything so that I could, you know, we could make this event. event as best as we possibly could. And yeah. then um, after, you know, it's not, there's not going to be another event like it. And mm -hmm. that, you know, Kevin and I do that. We've, you know, there, there's a couple programs we created and they were, in my opinion, the best, you know, marketing programs ever, but they pass, you know. Mm -hmm. And so this is not, you know, this is the event to be at. This is the one to make sure that you're, you're going to go in because, you know, everybody's going to go back into showing everybody you know, uh, telling everybody how to do stuff and not, you know, or showing everybody what to do, but not sharing exactly how to do it. And the reason these 12 guys are all going to do that is we're all honoring our father, my father's 80th birthday. And, you know, my dad, they wouldn't be in the position they were if my dad and my family didn't step up and give them the knowledge that they gave them and gave them the specific advice and the specific steps and the how to that we're trying to share now. Mm -hmm. So pow and it's so powerful. I mean, one idea can literally make someone a fortune, and that's not that's a hypey claim, but it's. Tr I nope. mean, it's true. I'm I'm telling you. Ask Robert Allen. My <sighs> yep. my dad gave him one idea. He used it and made seventy million dollars. Yep. Yeah. You know, so it was it's just like you know what you should try this and do it this way, and he did it and took off. Yep. 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 Um, so it's just just powerful it's so powerful and you just you get nothing by not connecting if you want to be more if you want to have more you have to do more and you have to uh, try more you know our family yeah. is actually famous for firsts you know i mean i was yeah. the first one to figure out how to get amazon to sell for us my dad made the most widely mailed sales letter in history which was the first letter selling coats of arms and family history mm -hmm. reports um mm -hmm. my brother kevin was the first one to figure out how to get email to, uh videos to start playing in email when you opened them um, uh -huh. the number of first you know I wrote the first book on editing copy I mean we're we're just about being on the cutting edge and being on the cutting edge means that you know all of the stuff that the masters have to teach you you know you know all the fundamentals you know all the basics and then you just get you get to the point where you know it all so well that what excites you is the new and fancy stuff and the and the mm -hmm. latest the latest and greatest and when you have the kind of access that you know thankfully through our father um, and the reputation and everything that we ended up with the kind of access that allows us to see what's the, the latest and greatest on everything and um, come to Vegas and, and get, get a taste of it. You'll, you, once you get a taste of it, you'll be addicted to it. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, that's that's why I first sought you out to have you on the show. The no, the knowledge and the quality of information is top notch. So go check out bondhalbert.com, the Gary Halbert newsletter.com, and of course the Gary Halbert Copy Club on Facebook. Bond, thank you again so much. It is an honor and a pleasure and a blessing to have people like you and Ben, but you because this is your moment in my life and here to share and just thank you so much for you know reaching out and sharing with myself and my audience you've got your own following a following that your father even developed before you got into it there's a lot of other people you could be talking to so it just it means the world to me and because I know this call is going to help a ton of people so thank you for your time today and thank you for having me great you've reached the end of our interview now first let me thank you for listening I appreciate and respect you more than you'll ever know and now I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, what three lessons did you just learn? What three aha moments just jumped out at you? Second, what can you implement for yourself and your business in the next 24 hours? Third, what can you give to someone else to help you with or give them to just do it for you? Whatever it is, remember taking action is the secret sauce to results. Now, if you think this interview would be helpful for a friend, please give them a link to it. It'll help them and it'll help me too. I'd also like to invite you to help me find out more about the challenges you're facing, your dreams, your goals, and how I can help you overcome what's holding you back. We both do better when we know better, and your success is my success. So please reach out and interact. You can visit our website, bestbusinesscoach.ca for Canada or California, where I'm from and where I'm living. You're welcome to also try out one of our paid programs. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and pretty much every other social media channel you can think of. You should also subscribe to the podcast. And if you're enjoying them, please leave us a nice review. It really helps. That's all for now. Once again, thank you.
take care of yourself, and remember, the world needs the best business you can build. And I believe in you.